Steam Next Fest is back now in June 2024. It's gonna take week from June 10 till 17 and there are a lot of demos maybe too many that's why i hope this video will be useful because i went through probably 200 of them and i made a list of those that really seems interesting to me and i am a kind of universal gamer i like a lot of different genres so let's start with flintlock the siege of dawn this is explosive soul slide where gods and guns collide in battle for the future of humanity we're starting with single player games only and in this one you're gonna step in the boots of nor vanek an elite member of kalichion army joined by enki and mysterious fox-like companion in their quest for vengeance against gods guided by Enki who shares his knowledge of the world with you. You combat skills and traversal capabilities. Very good visually, I have to say. And I like to play as female protagonists. So yeah, I'm in. Next one is called Reka. And in this one, you're gonna channel your inner witch. Build your cozy chicken-legged hut practice witchcraft and forage for ingredients in autumnal woodland, solve quests and uncover the great mysteries of the legendary witch Baba Yaga. Very interesting idea, very unique and finally something where you don't just shoot or fight people. And in the most games I played in World Crafting, the house is always most fun to craft. But it seems like only in this game, finally, you can move your house. It actually got legs. In Fading Skies, you're gonna explore a vivid fantasy world full of mystery, memorable characters and heart flat narrative. You're gonna unlock the power abilities of Rin and her dragon companion as you join her quest to stop the planet's collapse. Only by confronting the shadows of her forgotten past can the future be saved. This looks something between Fable and How to Tame the Dragon. Very colorful and looks very interesting. Tiny Glade is a small relaxing game about doodling castles. You're gonna explore gridless building chemistry, watch the game carefully assemble every brick, pebble and plank. There's no management, no combat or wrong answers. Just kick back and turn forgotten meadows into lovable dioramas. This is one of these really relaxing games where you just build and you're not forced to do quests or anything. You just play the game for the moment and unleash your creativity. If the control in this game is really good and user friendly, it could be really great. By the way, all the links to all these games are in the description so you don't have to go and look for it on the Steam. Creatures of Eva. This is an action adventure creature severed game in which you're gonna understand and tame the creatures of Eva and let them lead you through a variety of ecosystems, all in the hopes of saving the planet from a life consuming infection. Another explorative yet non shooter. Not sure if there's any combat. Looks like a Pokemon a little bit but maybe no fights. And I see you can even control your animals. That's interesting. Next one is Caravan Sandwich, a captivating narrative-driven exploration and adventure. This one looks very unique. You have this caravan car, but you can also leave it to some logical puzzles and I really like how the driving looks and even how the visual looks. It's this very nice visuals that will last probably another 20 years and nobody will tell you it didn't age well because it looks like an animated movie. But if you are into action there's a steel seed. 
Yet this is a stealth action adventure. It is set in dark sci-fi world. And you're gonna embark on a journey inside a hostile underground facility. You play Zoe and your friend Kobe, which is a flying drone, as her only companion. I honestly got some Dark Souls vibes, but also not beyond good and evil. And let's explore some RPG city builders in the open world. This game is called Airborne Empire and it's combining mythological construction and management of a city builder with the unique lift, balance and propulsion needed for a flying city. But you got also characters, dangers and adventures of an RPG. Very interesting, yet it mixed so many genres, so hopefully it went well. Usually it's either good city builder or RPG game, but we have a chance to find out on our own if the mix went well. In Parcel Corps you're going to play Freelance Bicycle Messenger. Forget the job security, stable salary and basic workplace rights and all the other boring works. In this one you're gonna ride along walls, green rails and startle pigeons on your way to corporation toppling domination. It looks like a great mix of Crazy Taxi and Tony Hawk. What can go wrong? Or maybe not Tony Hawk but what was it called? Dave Mira BMX? Anybody out there who still remembers it? 2024. In Moon Mystery, you're gonna figure out what happened there, unravel its mysteries and uncover why we really raced to land on its surface in 1969. Fill up on oxygen, load up your guns and set out on the celestial FPS investigation that starts on the moon and leads across the universe. I like that there are some driving mechanics, but I don't know how the FPS investigation can go together. I guess first you shoot and then you ask, but I do like story driven first person shooters. From the others. Dungeons of Hinterberg, where you are a tourist guide armed with a sword and you are going to explore the beautiful alpine village of Hinterberg and uncover the magic hidden with its dungeons. Master magic, soft puzzles, slay monsters, all this and more. I like how this game changes its perspectives and the hoverboard or whatever that is, that is really cool. And now we are moving from single player only to both single player and co-op. First is called Aloft and this is a co-op sandbox survival game set in the world of floating islands. Build any islands into a skyship, your home is the clowns. Find lost knowledge, cut the fungal corruption and brave the hurricane to restore the ecosystem. This sounds a little bit like the city building in the skies, yet this one is more third person action. Again, it's mixing many different genres, so only demo will show you if it really is successful. But the premise is really interesting. And I see on the picture that you can even fly on your own. That is very cool. In First Dwarf something unexpected happens because you can jump into your mech, build base and explore the crumbled fantasy world in this immersive action RPG. So we all know that dwarves are not the fastest but they can build things and it seems like you can build your mech, you can shoot enemies with it, you can build things with it, craft, get resources, you can get outside of the mech, you can even control a dragon and it's cop. So what more do you want? <laughs> Yet true purpose is found in having a place you can call home. This one looks silly, but let's include it. Bass Bro, you survived. 
This is one to four player cooperative loot action game. You're gonna save people from the zombie apocalypse, craft and expand your base and turn your boss into a real beast. The goal is to escape the island and uncover its conspiracies. It looks silly, but some of these games are really fun with friends and it could be this one. Once human. This time this is fully MMO, so no single player, online only. Open world survival game set in a strange post-apocalyptic future where you're gonna unite with friends to fight monstrous enemies, uncover secret plots, compete for resources and build your own territory. Once you were merely human, but now you have the power to remake the world. I got very strong remnant vibes, but with the crafting and building base, feels quite fresh. And we got an open beta of level zero extraction. Online only, and this is a multiplayer extraction horror with tactical FPS combat and immersive dark atmosphere. You're gonna test your survival skills against rival players and AI enemies during intense raids for valuable loot. Or you play as an alien monster that can only be killed with light and make sure no mortal escapes alive. So this is one of these games where you can join one of two sides and be either human or the creature. Odinfall is a Viking team roguelite twin stick shooter where you're gonna blast your way through procedurally generated levels, upgrade your character, modify your weapons and take down robotic Norse gods to earn your freedom. Very similar vibes to Nuclear Throne, which if you don't know, it looks very similar, maybe even more pixelated, but it is one of the best shooters like this. And this one is not only online co-op, but also single player. Fera, the Sounder Tribes, is another mixture of monster hunting survival, action RPG with village building and tribe management in a unique post-apocalyptic fantastical world of untamed magic and ancient secrets. Both single player and online co-op definitely looks more like Monster Hunter but with crafting and base building. There's a really lot of these post apocalyptic base building games recently, isn't it? Let's try something else. Eden Crafters. This time about crafting both single player and co-op in this open world game that challenges you to turn a hostile planet into the habitable heaven for humanity. Temper the climate, create a breathable atmosphere and turn toxic lakes into water and shape a new world. I really like that you can uh, control cars and even fly spaceships. Usually these kind of games so far were real-time strategy games, so it's really nice to see that they're trying a new genres, which crafting definitely is. And now we're going to sequels. Test Drive Unlimited, Solar Crown. I have to say that Test Drive Unlimited, the first one, many years ago is my favorite one. It's for me better than Forza and any other game. You get open world, city, lots of races, buying new garages, earning money. And this time in this way, it's no different, but it is set on Hong Kong islands. I think there's never been an open world in Hong Kong that has been a racing game. So really good idea. And I have a really high hopes for this racing game. If it's anything like its predecessor, it's going to be fantastic. I have proved my worth. The Sharps opened their doors to me. Their representation of sophistication and prestige made me join them without hesitation. This time this is not a sequel, this is a total remake of classic adventure Riven. The original is from 1997 and this is really great mysterious games with almost no characters. You are just trying to make understand of the strange mechanisms on this planet. The story is of intrigue, 
betrayal and a civilization on the brink of collapse as you solve intricate puzzles to unlock the secrets. Really great idea to do remake of this one so even new players can enjoy it and the old ones will definitely play it because this is one of these games that set the genre. He's waiting for you to make a mistake. The island has been steadily decaying for years. Tales of Iron 2 Whiskers of Winter. Tales of Iron 1 is definitely one of the best games I've played last year. And yeah, it looks charming, but it is far more than that. I call this game simply two dimensional Dark Souls. Yes, you play a red, but everything else is really close. It's all about these difficult bosses your different weapons and your skills that is the most important factor. This time you're gonna harsh in the northern islands, home to giant beasts and ragtag bandits in an epic quest to overcome an ancient blood starved evil. Really looking forward to this one. For all. But you won't defeat Count Kazak and his dreaded sky scorcher. Wizard of Legend 2 is the only game that is on this list and you can play Couch Co-op. Of course you can play it online co-op as well, but for player Couch Co-op, split screen or shared screen, this is the way to go. As this is a magical, fast-paced, roguelite follow-up of the acclaimed original with the vibrant new 3D visuals. As you master new arcana and elements, experiment with spells, combinations and become the next wizard of legend. You can play it single player, but I think the multiplayer is the way to go with this one. Stronger spells. A boost to your arcana shall serve you wisely. And now let's go to the three games that we got the predecessors free from Epic Game Store. Cat's Quest 3 is coming. And this is an open world 2.5D RPG with the cat and with the dog. And this time you're gonna even leave the land and go to the sea, have battles. And once again, you can play it even with your friend as there are two characters. If you play it single player, you can switch between them and the other one AI takes care of. Very fun game. And I know it looks like it's for kids. The story is not so kid friendly but it is very addictive, at least the second one was. Crashlands 2 is a game that doesn't take itself seriously. It is an R crafting RPG in open world, in a massive world with a funny story, a bizarre weaponry and even more bizarre characters. Lots of action, lots of gathering of items, lots of crafting and just silly game. Best to make a home for yourself, but not just yourself, because loneliness sucks. Lost Castle 2, a 2D beat and up roguelite game where you're gonna explore abundant treasures and items to enhance yourself master various weapons to showcase your skills and challenge powerful monsters to demonstrate your strength. A new adventure is calling for treasure hunters. This game is online co-op but single player as well. The first one was couch co-op. I don't see it here on Steam so if anyone of you tried please let me know in the comments if it's possible to play on same screen as well. And the last one, a bonus one perhaps, it's called Charming Hearts. And perhaps some of these games were too pixelated, so if you want the best visuals, this is the best visuals. This is not Unreal Engine 5, this is a kind of visual novel game. It's more like a dating interactive real life simulator. And don't worry, the trailer is in Chinese, but it's actually in English as well. In this game, you will meet get to know and fall in love with the different types of beauty. Every choice will lead to a completely different chemical reaction with her. So if you want to practice dating, this could be a good chance. And now the list is complete. Please do let me know which one are you going to try. And if you try it, please comment 
if you like it so other people can see which one they should try also or which one to avoid. Also there are so many other games so feel free to tell me that I missed some other game that is really great. Always open for recommendations. And this channel is about free games. I'm not talking about demo versions, actual free games that you can claim and keep forever. So stay tuned for that and I hope to see you in another video. If you like me,